Here we go. All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome, and hello. Today is Thursday. Yeah, which means that it is vlog day. First vlog in the new office. Good times. And I've said this, I don't even, I can't even count how many times I've said this. My preferred time to shoot the vlog is at night. But sometimes my schedule is such that I have to shoot it during the day. Today is one of those days. I'm still trying to get caught up from when I was moving. There's just a whole lot of stuff going on this week. I mean, the vapor industry is, it's out of control. I don't even know how anybody does it. I don't know how anybody keeps up. We're dealing with state and local government regulations. We're dealing with the FDA regulations. We have this regime change with President Donald Trump now in office, which is gonna change things. We just had a huge win in Indiana. We're trying to deal with you, uh, UK, uh, European TPD stuff. It's, oh man, it's a, it's a lot to do, man. But regardless, hope everyone likes the new office. Kind of looks like my old office. Like if I'm being completely honest, I changed some stuff on the wall. You can see the wood floors. I'm trying to figure out like lighting still and camera angle still and everything else still. But I think, I feel like this is pretty good. I feel like we're in a good spot to move forward from. Of course, things are always, always gonna be changing and I might be changing my camera position and I might be changing, you know, lighting and you can't even see my microphone anymore. It's hi. It's way down here. It's still a little bit echoey, but regardless, you know what? Let's just dig into this vlog. Let me get out my vlog notes and see what we're gonna be talking about this week. We do have some news and advocacy here at the top of the program. We're gonna have a beer taste which I am actually going to shoot tonight as opposed to right now because drinking, uh, uh, pardon me, but see, even just talking about beer fucking makes me, makes me burp. Drinking a gigantic beer at two in the afternoon for some reason right now just doesn't sound super appealing, but we're going to be talking about what I've been vaping. We're going to have a beer tasting segment in there as well. We're going to do shout outs. We're going to do some first impressions. I have like two first impressions, I guess. I actually don't have a retro vaping segment prepared this week, and I don't have a review for a thing that never got a review this week. I'm gonna try and shoehorn in this sort of other segment that I've been thinking of that I don't even know what it's what it's gonna be called yet, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there, and then of course we're gonna wrap it up with my favorite comments of the week. But welcome, man, this is the vlog, and it's always really good times over here. Um, first thing I have up on my vlog notes is my, ma okay, yeah, my math was wrong. Um, I don't know if everybody knows the story of me and how terrible at math I am, but yeah, I'm really terrible at math. I basically cheated my way through three years of math, and then I was so bad in math that in high school, they put me in a special, like, math class that was literally just me. It was me. There was no teacher, there was no homework or anything. I had a book and I was supposed to learn math from a book and all of the answers were in the back of the book. So I, I basically just cheated the whole time and didn't really learn any math uh, anything. It was called Math A. We make jokes about it all the time on the Culture of Clouds podcast, but definitely Math A over here. My math was wrong in the Indiana stuff that I was talking about last week, but now that honestly doesn't matter because... Everything is changing in Indiana again. All of the current, uh, you know, vapor laws regarding like security firms and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other, they're being repealed because they were deemed unconstitutional according to the Indiana state constitution, which is great. That is fantastic. That's a huge win for the vapors and vape shops in Indiana. If you want to hear me talk about that more, check out my last Tuesday, bro, Tuesday video. It's at the very beginning of that program. Um, yes, this mech mod, this mech mod last week that I had that I assumed was from Raven's Moon Vapor because of the button on the bottom. It may not be from Raven Moon Vapor. It's from a company called Envy, and this is the Heretic. And people keep telling me, oh, well, Envy is part of Raven's Moon Vapor, or Raven's Moon Vapor is part of Envy, but it's Envy, E-N-V-I-I. -I. This is the Heretic, and I can't remember the name of the RDA on top, but we're gonna talk about that in a second as well when I get into what I've been vaping. Um, let's get into some actual news here, not just like self-serving news, not just like, oh, uh, here's some corrections from last week. Why doesn't everybody go ahead and hit that like button? Uh, someday I'm gonna figure out what side the like button 
button is on, but if you hit it, you you get a you get a grim green banana sticker. I actually don't have any actual banana stickers to send you, but you'll get a mental banana sticker from my mind to your mind. If you hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. So let's get into some actual news here. Uh, Steven sent me this article over, and I just have, in quotation marks, I have Steven sent me this article, rage article. Oh, you know what that means. I'm gonna get all, I'm gonna get all freaking fired up and start yelling at my computer screen like an idiot. So this comes from Across the Pond in Wales. On BBC News, there's an article that says, a call to ban sweet-flavored e-cigarettes in Wales. And let me tell you something, everybody. The, the, the appealing to kids because of sweet flavors is the, the stupidest, worst, most ridiculously lame duck argument that the anti-vaping crowd could possibly come up with. It's it's completely, completely ridiculous. Health officials are calling for a ban on the sale of confectionery-like flavors and e-cigarettes over concerns that they appeal to children. And here's the thing, sweet flavors absolutely do appeal to children. That's why there's like Lucky Charms, sugary cereals, I am much older than a child, and I like Lucky Charms. Adults also enjoy flavors. I don't know any adult, I mean, they probably exist, but I know very few adults that don't want, like, dessert after a meal. Like, hey, let's have some some bananas foster sure let's have a, let's have a slice of cherry pie or some cake at weddings where adults get married they're not serving a big brick of styrofoam they're serving a goddamn wedding cake with like raspberry filling and delicious white cake and white buttercream frosting and now i just really want cake adults like flavors too whales Adults like flavors too. And having the flavor component in vaping is just another thing to disassociate vaping from smoking. Not only physically, but also mentally. You detach it in your head from smoking. When I think of vaping now, it's I don't think of smoking in any capacity. It's a completely different thing. It's its own unique thing and the and the two are not connected but by one little molecule of nicotine. I haven't even read the article yet and I'm already getting all fired up. Public Health Wales <laughs> said it could potentially lead children to nicotine addiction uh, in later in adult life. It recommends restrictions on advertising e-cigarettes in the media regularly viewed by children. Sure. I mean, absolutely. I don't know of any advertising that ever happens like on Cartoon Network or anything like uh, Saturday morning cartoons there's not uh, I've n there's not vaping ads on I don't know. I mean, where do you draw the line? Is there vaping ads? Like, do kids watch football games? Is there going to be an ad in a football game and kids could possibly see it? I mean, how how far are we going to go with this? One vaping company said it should be able to market itself as an alternative to smoking. There are also calls for restrictions on the use of e-cigarettes e -cigarettes in and around school grounds. Sure. Fine. That's fine. E-cigarettes deliver nicotine with an inhalable aerosol. I love that they use the term inhalable aerosol. It just sounds so much scarier than vapor. Ashley Gould from Public Health Wales said, you can buy bubblegum, candy floss, jam donut flavored e-cigarettes, and they are only aimed at one audience, and that audience is children. Yes, the, the flavor of a donut is only marketed at children. That's why at Donut Bar in San Diego, outside every morning, all you see are kids. It's just all kids. How'd they get there? There's no parents around. It's just children. Public Health Wales said that the health risks... Uh, <laughs> Public Health Wales said that the health risks associated with e-cigarettes were significantly lower than e-cigarettes, but they are not without risk. Again, okay, how many times have we said this? How many times, how, how many times can we possibly go over the same argument? What single thing in your life is without risk? Even just by sitting in this office right now, I'm exposed to risk. My chair could break. 
I could fall and smash my elbow on the ground. My wiring in my apartment could short out and cause a fire. My windows open and the pollution from cars driving by on the street could waft in here. This track lighting above my head could just fall out of the ceiling and crush my skull and kill me. There is not one thing in life that is 100% risk free. Public Health Wales said that the potential risks are mimicking smoking a cigarette, which could play a role into normalizing smoking behavior. I, okay, I can't even. Uh, this just makes me rage so hard. Hang on, let me, uh, let me mimic drinking hard alcohol out of this cup. We should probably ban cups of water because it mimics drinking hard alcohol. May reduce the likelihood of smokers quitting by displacing proven methods, aka big pharma methods, potentially acting as a gateway to tobacco use, which we know that there is literally absolutely zero evidence for. The potential benefits of e-cigarettes can have on smokers were also identified. The UK's Royal College of Physicians previously said that should, they should be offered to smokers to help them quit. Yes. Thank you, Royal College of Physicians, for being a voice of reason. Mr. Gould said for people who are smoking and want to continue to do so, they would 100% advocate making the switch to e-cigarettes because it's less harmful than continuing to smoke. Joe Bevan, director at Celtic Vapor, said that he would like to be able his mark to market his product as an alternative to smoking. We're not nicotine replacement therapy, and we are not smoking. The Vapor e-cigarettes give off is no more dangerous than the actual air we breathe on a daily basis. Our emissions tests have shown that if you stand by a busy road, you will inhale more toxins. Yes. Good. Great. I'm. G thank you. What was your name? Joe Bevan, director at Celtic Vapors. Thank you for being reasonable, rational, and logical and getting the point across in this otherwise unbelievably unbelievably ridiculous argument there you will constantly see this this is a thing we always see oh sweet flavors yeah they they appeal to kids oh it's gonna it's gonna normalize smoking oh well they're safer but they're not completely safe ridiculous lame duck arguments constantly happening by the antis and it just drives me insane and i, I see stuff like this and I see whatever spokesperson from Public Health Wales, and I think to myself, you you can't possibly believe what you're saying. Like you you can't look at yourself in the mirror and go, well, it might be safer, but it's not without risk. It's not a hundred percent safe. Forget the fact that it could save billions of lives. It needs to be, it needs to save a billion lives and also be 100% safe, also not have any sweet flavorings, and also something else. I can't even remember where I was going with that. Oh, it also can't re-normalize smoking, whatever the fuck that means. That is stupid. Sorry, rage article. I did warn, I did say that this would be a rage article. So there you go. I'm gonna post a link in the description if you would like to read this rage article and rage on your own time. I think that's a, I think that's a pretty good day. I think that's a pretty good idea. Moving on to some more interesting news. Um, Battery Mooch, uh, who's fantastic, he's a great guy. He's just a wonderful guy. Battery Mooch, I love you. You're out there doing God's work. I think that's fantastic. He sent me a link to a new battery that he tested recently that I am dying to not only try, but I want mod makers to start incorporating this battery into their mods. It's a Sanyo 2700, 2700. Those are the diameters. So it's like, is that what it is? Yeah, it's a 2700, 20, 20, and then 700A. Okay, no, wait, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. No, I'm right. Yeah, it's the Sanyo 20700A 30 amp 3100 ma battery. He says it's a great performing 30 amp true 3100 milliamp hour battery. Bottom line, the Sanyo 2700A is the second newly available 20 millimeter by 70 millimeter cell that I have tested. It was first the 2700B and now it's the 2700A. Great high capacity cell rated at 16 amps, 14,000 ma, and 10 to 15 amps. It runs 25% longer than the LG HD2. The 2700A is a true high performance cell that I am rating at a cool rating, cool running 30 amps, 
3,100 milliamp hour. It performed well against the top 18650 cells for performance, vaping time, and safety high amp ratings. They hit just as hard as the Sony VTC5 at the start and easily hold their voltage up higher for considerably longer. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I read that really bizarrely. Mooch didn't write that weird. I just read it really weird. He says, while this cell will only fit in a custom battery sled, uh, it did fit in the XTAR and EFES chargers I tested. I cannot say if it will fit in any 18650 charger. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, it's charged at 4.2 volts, just like our 18650s. Its standard charging rate is 2.2 amps, so two amp charging is no problem and won't decrease the overall all life. I'm giving the Sanyo 2700A a maximum vaping amp of 45 amps. Cool, that's dope. The I want this battery, man. I just want it. I want it in a mech. I would love to run it in like a single battery mech mod. I would love to run it in a parallel. Could you imagine running a true 3,100 milliamp hour battery in a parallel mod? Fuck, dude, that would be amazing. That would be so cool. So, you know what? I'll post a link down in the description. If you know where to buy these batteries, or if you know, okay, obviously they're on, they're probably gonna be on imrbatteries.com because that's where he got the batteries. If you know any mods or anything that these batteries fit into, let a Grim Green know because if I have any existing mods that these would happen to fit into, which I don't think is the case, I don't think I have any mods that would fit a, a longer battery like that. Maybe like a telescoping mech mod, maybe like that TVL mech, or maybe like the Rogue that has the telescoping button, maybe that could account for some distance there in the batteries, but I love I love Mooch and I love what he does. Thank you for sending that information my way. I'm gonna post a link down in the description where you can check out that battery if you are interested. Um, I did have one more quick, tiny little news thing. It's just super quick. Kyle sent me an email in the last Tuesday, bro. Tuesday video, a viewer had written in and was talking about the, the VG buildup, the vapor buildup that happens on Windows, like especially in the winter time. And I had recommended this product called Exonerate, which works unbelievable, but is hard to find. It is expensive and it smells like beef. He has a method, Kyle, he just said he uh, soaks a towel in very, very hot water, very hot water, wrings it out, uses that to wipe down the windows, then dries it off. He said it takes it off perfectly. I haven't tried it. Um, I do have to clean the, w the windows in my new office, so I'm going to try Kyle's like hot water towel method and see, I don't know, see how that goes. Could be pretty cool, could work really well, but thank you, Kyle, for sending uh, sending me that little tip, that little information right there. So that's gonna wrap up this news segment, which I feel uh, I'm good. I feel good about that. I feel like that went pretty well. I am gonna jump into some what I've been vaping, but before we get there, it seems like people, I have two intros now for the what I've been vaping segment. I have like the blue grassy hillbilly one, and then I have like the computery cool matrixy hacker looking one. I'm just gonna alternate them back and forth. Like for I'll use this one for a few weeks, and I'll use this one for a few weeks, and then I'll alternate them back and forth because people like both of them and then people dislike both of them. But the original creator of the blue grassy guy, he goes by Scarecrow Jenkins. He put that music to video, like he made a video out of it, and that's what, a fucking phone's ringing. Sorry about that, that's what I'm gonna use right now. Let's talk about what I've been vaping. What I've been vaping. So first things first, I'm still using that Nugget Pro Troll RTA combo. I've got Caramel Corpse from the Grim Cult line in here. I just love the Troll. If uh, if you didn't check it out on Wednesday, yesterday, I uploaded a video for the Troll RDA. It's a pretty fantastic little RDA, and overall, I'm a huge fan of it. Um, Troll RDA Caramel Corpse, this is uh, 0.19 at 66 watts. It's just been a fantastic vape. As you can see, this Troll is, I mean, it's, it's mostly empty. That's basically an empty tank. Um, I can see that there's a little bit of liquid at the bottom and the wicks are still wet. And as long as those wicks are still wet, I'm gonna have a couple rips on it. 
Great, great, great. That is just a great vape. Also, Noisy Cricket version 2. I did a review for this recently as well. This is just something that's just never going to leave. I'm going to always, literally always have the Noisy Cricket 2 around. I've got the Altus T1 uh, that we just finished up in the last Tuesday Bro Tuesday. Still rocking it. Rainbow Sherbet in the dark. It's just fantastic. I maxed out the wattage on this. You hear the dogs barking outside? There's dogs. Did you hear the dogs barking outside? Did you hear them? Anyway, where was I? Yes, Noisy Cricket 2-25, which I know is now, this is 25 millimeters and they're doing a 22 millimeter one, blah. Noisy Cricket 2-25, Altus T1, Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark. I have the wattage cranked all the way up now to the highest. It's sitting right at about six volts. It is a great vape. It eliminates that ramp up time and it just gives you nice, creamy, warm vapor into your mouth hole. Really enjoying that tank. And yes, I have the Envy, what was this thing called from Envy, the Heretech uh, mech mod with the atomizer that I don't remember the name of. I promised to get all this information and try to put it in the description to this video. This has been just a really fantastic vape. Um, I misspoke last week and it's not 24 gauge. I used 22 gauge on here and it came out to 0.19 running it on a single 18650. I have the cookie from Telios in here. It's just a really stellar vape. I, I like single 18650 mechs. Don't care. Can't stop, won't stop. I just like vaping them. Second to last, I'm still using that Coil Art box. The Coil Art box mod from Coil Art Coil Tech. Remember, it's got a wolf on the one side, and I'm using that Mage RDA on top. <laughs> this has just been an overall pretty rad vape. I like it. It kind of reminds me of the Hexome in that you just adjust to taste. I like being able to blow my juice through the top because it's got that, like, Twisted Messes squared style deck. I can just blow my juice in through the top, and I don't really have to worry about it. <laughs> going through the uh, airflow holes, Kennedy style airflow. This is uh, the Dojo from the Ronin. Just a fantastic, this is just a fantastic vape. This is one of my favorites right now. Super delicious, super delicious. This just got introduced in my Tuesday Bro Tuesday video, the Asmodus plaque and yeah, I asked for a poll, like, do you think this is ugly or not? And the overwhelming majority said, yes, it's gaudy and it's tacky. It's kind of starting to grow on me now. I, I like holding it and I like using it. I just don't like looking at it. One issue I've run into so far, this door. Every time I grab it, you can't see it. The door is raised right there because I press it into my palm so that I can squeeze it and press the button on it. It moves the door around. You have a lot of play here in the door, which is kind of a bummer. Have that topped with the brass recoil, DHD cap on top, and Lane Cove, Mai. I mean, that's a juice that I'll, I'll vape until I'm dead, and even hopefully after that. Fuck, that's a good vape. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've been vaping. I've also been vaping the crap out of this fix little guy. Little fix, little pod system. 50 milligram, it's fantastic. We went out to the Modern Times Flavor Dome the other day, and we were sitting out back and drinking beer, and it, you know, it says no smoking, but you can stealth vape this, and it's great. It's a great way when you're relaxing to get some nicotine into your system, which I like to do, obviously. I like it a lot, and the fix is rad. I've just really been enjoying it. I'm not going to vape it because watching mouth to lung vaping, probably one of the most boring things on earth, but that fix, I might do, actually, I might actually do a review for that very, very soon because I think more people need to buy it because the fix is pretty freaking rad. So yeah, that's what I've been vaping. Um, we're going to kind of fast forward in time right now, I guess, and we're going to go to... Shit, where's my fridge? It's there. Right there. That's the new beer section. Right, well, let's taste some freaking beer. I am really excited about this beer that we have tonight. This was kind of a, uh, you know, a celebratory purchase. Um, just moved into a brand new place, had got mostly unpacked. We were at uh, the store and I was like, I just want to buy a really good beer that I know that I'm going to love as like a celebratory hooray. We, we, we fucking made it into the new place. And whenever anyone asks me, 
anyone asks me, oh, Grim Green, what's your favorite beer? I tell them this, St. Bernardus ABT 12. This is, this is my favorite beer and it has a cork on it. How, how ironic is that? I have cork fear and my favorite beer has a cork. What are you gonna do? It's just so freaking delicious. Uh, St. Bernardus ABT 12, as I understand it, is a clone beer. There was something about the monasteries and the breweries and these monks had a recipe and it was a really popular famous beer and then the other monks, they took the recipe and then that what that's what became St. Bernardus ABT 12. It's a bottle conditioned Belgian style dark ale. I love it. I just, I'm getting all, all like frothy in the jowls even thinking about it. So let's do this cork. Come on, baby. Oh God, it's bad. Why? Woo, doggy. Good, good. Oh, it's good. I'm gonna save this cork. So I'm gonna be pouring this into a tulip style glass, not over my keyboard. This beer isn't intensely dark. It's got like a, a, sort of a, a translucent darkish amber color. I gave it a really strong pour because it's got a really strong carbonated head. This is a very carbonated juice. Juice? What? I was thinking about doing the effervescent joke and I said juice instead of beer. It's a very carbonated beer or effervescent. It smells delicious. I get a lot of like uh, citrusy Belgian notes in it. I do get some of those subtle like lower notes like dates and raisins, sort of a molassesy type flavor. But overall, I get like that Belgian-y upfront citrusy sweetness from this juice. I, I absolutely love it. If you are a vlog viewer and if you are an avid beer person, I highly, highly recommend checking out the St. Bernardus ABT 12 because it's delicious. This is for you guys. Cheers. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's so good. It's it's my favorite beer. <laughs> it's so good. If I have a choice, well, okay, I can't even throw that scenario out there. I was gonna say, if I have a choice between like any other beer or the St. Bernardus ABT 12, I'll choose the St. Bernardus ABT 12, but that's not, pardon me, that's not entirely true because there are some excellent, excellent beers out there. Like if I have the choice between like West Valetren, I would probably drink that, but the ABT 12 is good. Oh, it's it's so good. It's juicy. It's sweet. I get some citrus notes. I get some low notes. It's very effervescent. And it's just overall an incredibly, incredibly delicious beer. I already know what this says over on the Beer Advocate. It's got a 98.99 score, which is a really good beer. And I didn't know that um, I randomly bought this beer at uh, Aloha Liquor back in Carson City, Nevada, back in my own hometown, Carson City, Nevada. My favorite liquor store was Aloha Liquor because it was the best liquor store in Carson City and it was the only liquor store in Carson City that got those like, pardon me, I'm gonna burp. <clears throat> they got those like even slightly rare beers. Like they would carry like the Samuel Smith stuff. They would carry the Golden Drac and the Duval and I don't know what made me want to buy this beer. Uh, I believe it was my buddy Brandon, whom we call Meat, was ta we were talking about the St. Bernardus, and they had a couple bottles of the ABT 12. And this isn't like a rare beer. Like, if your local grocery store or Ralph's or Food Lion or Target carries beer, chances are they're probably going to have the St. Bernardus ABT 12. It is a readily available, incredibly, incredibly delicious beer. And it's been like a solid year since I've had it. So good. It's pretty high on the ABV too. It's a 10%, which is is good. That's great. I, I love 10% beers. Um, I actually want to try to pair this beer with Vlog Day. This is, Vlog Day is a juice that was created specifically for tasting with Belgian beers. It's a lemon cream macaroon cookie and the citrusy of the lemon cream, it's almost more like a lemon pudding. It's like a creamy lemon pudding. And this Vlog Day was, I wanted to vape this with beers and it turns out that like Yig and Donut Pounder are like my go-to beer juices these days, but I am really wanting to taste Vlog Day. It's in the Alpine RDTA on top of the CKS Icon 200, which you'll see later in the first impressions of this video, but let's give it a shot.
stellar. That's great. That is a great pairing. The juice actually makes the beer taste sweeter. Like it brings out the sweetness of this beer. I love it. Holy crap. I love it. I just love it so much. Seriously, if you are a beer person and, you, and you're into Belgians or you're not even into Belgians, just please, please try the ABT-12. Try the St. Bernardus ABT-12. In fact, if you try the St. Bernardus ABT-12 and you post a picture on social media, tag me in it and let me know what you think of the beer. I want to hear your thoughts on this beer. If you've ever had this beer, leave a comment down below and let me know whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it, because the St. Bernardus has become like my benchmark of a really good Belgian strong ale that is my favorite beer and I judge all other beers against it. So I'd be interested to get all of your feedback and that was a really, really good vape pairing. Anyway, yeah, so that's good. I think that's gonna do it up, uh, I think that's gonna do it here for the beat. <laughs> I think that's gonna do it here for the beer section. My night vlogging, bro, this night vlogging light is so fantastic. I'm gonna shoot all my vlogs at night. I'm gonna make an honest attempt to get all my vlogs done at night now because I just like the way this looks so much better. But that's, that's the beer section. What we do after the beer section every time here on Vlog Day, it's time for some shout outs. It is shout out time. All right, well, we do have some freaking shout outs to do. And the first person I want to shout out is someone that I was supposed to shout out a while ago. I've, if I'm being honest, I've been slacking, and that's probably due to the sheer overwhelming number of shout out requests I get. But I got this guy. I want to shout out Kyle. Do you see this art right here? Look at that. That is unbelievable. That's amazing. Uh, he sent this to me. We were talking about doing some sort of like art related advocacy fundraiser thing. I'm um, not sure if he's still into that. I would still be into pimping out something like that. I just don't quite know what that looks like. If anybody has any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. But he is obviously clearly a very talented artist and he was trying to figure out a way to use his art to raise money for advocacy for the Right to Be Smoke Free Coalition of which they still, yes, still need money. But he wrote on the back of this and said, Grim, thanks again for the awesome videos and for everything you do for vaping. Uh, we can win the fight against these assholes. And then he wrote, hashtag fuck the long story about her conversion and when she smoked and how often and, and what vape stuff she used and it was it was a very a very good story i love hearing success stories like that she wraps it up by saying anyway i'm not asking for a shout out for myself but if you could that would be cool sure ellie boom shout it out you done that was so easy i want to shout out for my amazing boyfriend jonah he has brought me back to health and showed me what life is all about i really couldn't be without him plus it would be so good if you could shout him out in one of your videos as he wouldn't believe it jonah get ready to believe boom you are shouted out i want your fist against that computer monitor or television or iPad, or iPhone, or Android, or smartphone, or screen, or tablet, or Microsoft tablet, whatever, bump it, bump that fist. Sorry, this is so long, but I tried to compress this email. I understand that you can be so busy, you'll most likely never read my email, but if you do one day, thank you, Mr. Nick Green. Uh, the thanks you should get should be endless for how much work you do for the vaping world and how much influence you have in people's lives. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you, honestly, truly and honestly, thank you, Ellie. Uh, I don't, I, nothing I do is to be thanked or get recognition. Um, I know that I'm just a part of something that is far bigger than myself. I'm a I'm a little I'm a little wheel. I'm a little gear. I'm a little pointy gear inside of a much bigger, much larger uh, machine. But thank you. I absolutely, uh, I absolutely try to do my best. Uh, Christy writes to me and says, "Hey Nick, uh, this coming Thursday on 126, my husband's John is my husband's John's birthday. He'll be turning 37, and he would love a shout out from you as he and I are big fans of your YouTube channel and your Name Reduce line. Thank you so much for the great work, Christy. Sent from Dimension C137. Absolutely, set your portal gun." 
Dimension C-137. That's right. That's how you always get back home. Absolutely, Christy, you are considered shouted out. And also, John, happy birthday. Hope you have a great happy birthday. I remember being 37. 37 was awesome. 37 was dope. My 30s were so much better than my 20s. And uh, I'm hoping that my 40s will be better than my 30s, if that's even possible. Matt wrote to me and said, hey, Nick, my name is Matt. And I noticed that in your 126 Thursday vlog that you made a special note about birthdays. I may be a little bait. A little bit late, but my 18th birthday was on the 13th of January, I'm assuming. I started using cancer sticks when I was 14, and after a few I was hooked, I regret ever picking one up. Two years later, I found vaping through one of your videos and it convinced me that it was now time to quit. I picked up a cheap Inokin MVP 20 watt and Aspire Nautilus Mini, and the rest is history. Yeah, dude, that's all you need. An MVP and an Aspire Nautilus Mini, that's amazing. That's a great, you picked a really great starter kit. The rest is history. My 18th birthday marks two years free of the stinky. Since then, I have tried my hardest to get my friends who smoked to switch over to that toot life. <laughs> the only downside is my country has dumb laws where you have to be 21 to buy tobacco products, including e-juice. You have to be 21 to buy tobacco products, including e-juice. Think about that for a second. E-juice e is not a tobacco product, but you can be 18 to possess them legally. I was wondering if I could get a shout out. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. I love your videos and I hope, you, I hope your new dope ass apartment is as dope ass as you say it is. It absolutely is, Matt, and consider yourself shouted out. You know, this is one of those things when, we, when we're changing all these laws to be 21 and over, we don't think about people like Matt who started smoking when they were 14 years old, who at the age of 16 decided to quit smoking and pick up vaping and then now that they're 18 years old and can legally smoke and can legally vape now we change that on them so i mean what the fuck what the fuck is matt supposed to do now matt's now i you know if he tries to buy vape stuff he's basically going to be a criminal and that sucks that's stupid that's that's a, that's a stupid thing anyway Consider yourself shouted out, Matt. Best of luck to you. I do want to give a shout out also to Dr. Pennsylvania Pia 56. Dr. Pennsylvania Pia 56. I recognize you. I see you all the time in my comment section. He had a birthday on December 15th. You are shouted out. I hope you had a really great birthday. And he sent me a very long email of a lot of stuff that, he, that he's dealing with. And I feel like some of it's a little bit too personal to, to be shared, but he's dealing with a lot of physical pain, emotional pain. He's going through, he's going through, a, he's, he's having a moment, man. He's going through a lot of stuff. So consider yourself shouted out. I hope you're doing much better. He wraps it up and says, your videos have this way of making me feel connected to the outside world, no matter how bad I feel. Your videos have helped me to a degree that cannot be measured. I have saved tons of money because of the videos and I have spent a ton because of your videos. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's that's also a thing. As much money as you save, there's a million good things that uh, I'm going to tell you to buy. I can't believe it's been five years already, but what I do believe is that you have made a huge difference in my life by keeping me off SIGs and lifting my spirits when I am down. It's hard to put into words what an immense impact you've had on my life, and I will always be grateful that, by that. I used to go uh, under another screen name of Fred Fizzini. Yes. Uh, here on YouTube, but I'm not sure that rings a bell or not. Anyway, thank you, Nick, for making my life better and dragging and for dragging me out of my deep, intense funk over the last five years. I non-sexually, non-romantically love you, bro. Finally, now and always, keep on vaping. Absolutely. Uh, Fred Fazzini, Dr. Pennsylvania. Dr. Pennsylvania, what, how, what, what, I don't, is your real name Fred? And then you just decided one day... Dr. Pennsylvania. Like, that's a really cool name. Like, hey, I'm Dr. Pennsylvania. I just think that's, I don't know, I think that's kind of a cool name. Anyway, I'm glad my videos help. Um, honestly, that is incredibly humbling, incredibly heartwarming. I, I really hope you do get out of this funk. But in the meantime, here's a shout out for you. Bump that fist, Mr. Fred, Mr. Dr. Pennsylvania. Oh, no. Okay, that birthday's too early. I think this is, uh, I think that's all my shout outs. I think that is all my shout outs for right now. So yeah, boom, roasted. We're done. We're going to get through some shout outs. Uh, we haven't, I haven't tasted beer yet today. That's yet to happen in the future. But we did a whole bunch of news reviews and advocacy. Uh, talked about what I've been vaping already. It's time to, uh, it's not a lot. I mean, I'm being honest with you guys. It's not a lot of first impressions. But what I want to do is have some first impressions. 
So, like I said, I got a few first impressions to do, but honestly, not a whole lot. I have one mystery box right here, which could have... Ooh, there could be anything in here, right? And I did also get a package from Cloud Kicker Society, CKS Cloud Kicker Society, some of my most favorite people on Earth. Just genuinely good people. Ren and the crew at CKS, I just love them. They sent me this huge mouse pad that is... I mean, it's like this big. It's like it's like a it's like a huge mouse pad. It's got their logo all over it. I love their logo. I love their branding. I'm using it on my desk right now, gents. I'm using it right now. What? You don't believe me? Fine. Look, Cloud Kicker Society. Yeah, it's on my desk, bro. Cool. I just love them. I love their branding and I love all their stuff. They sent me their new mod, which ugh, it's been a struggle not opening this. I haven't opened this. I saw the package. I saw this. I saw what it was. The Icon 200. And I was like, oh, I want to use that so bad, but we're not. We're going to we're going to first impressionate it in this video. I also wanted to open this on camera because it's Cloud Kicker cotton, and it comes in like a tin with like a lid. And I want I just wanted to open this for some reason on camera. Ready? I don't know why that was so fun. I don't know why that was so interesting. Oh, dope! So wow, that's interesting. It's um, it looks like Japanese organic cotton but it's a whole bunch of like pre-cut strips of cotton. Do you see this? Let me get it in focus back here. It's like a whole mess of, that's cool. I mean, that's cool. I don't know what how big these are. I feel like these would be good for maybe like a two and a half to three millimeter coil. 60 pre-cut strips. You have to be 21 to buy this because yeah, I guess it's a tobacco product now. Imported from Australia, no additives, no bleach. Cool, that's cool. The cotton. The cotton is cool. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna put these strips in my desk drawer though, you see, and so, and then I'm gonna reseal this. And I don't know, I just really wanted to open that on, on camera for some reason, but I really wanna open this mod. And we're gonna do it for the first time right now. So this is the Cloud Kicker Society Icon 200, Icon 200 mod, micro USB cable, instruction manual, warranty card, specifications, it's the VO Tech chipset 200, 0.91 inch OLED screen, 200 watt power mode, advanced temperature controls, variable power control mode to customize your draw, bypass mode, pass through USB charging, one amp USB quick charge. It's just cool, all their branding is cool. I like this Fujin guy, I like all this stuff. Let's take a look at this device. Oh, that's so cool. It's really light. I didn't think it was going to be that light, but it is really light. Oh, look at that. It's got like this, it's got like a, it's got like a protruding 510. So this is the mod, Cloud Kicker Society, and it's kind of like that very slightly soft rubbery finish all the way around. It's intensely light. I mean, intensely light. It's got a screen on one side, clicky button, clicky button. I'm assuming it has a spring-loaded 510. I wonder what the diameter of that 510 is. I'm hoping it's at least 24 millimeters. And success. It looks to be about 24 millimeters. There's the copper, uh, copper. Why do I look at brass and say copper? Why does that happen? Why is that a thing? Brass recoil on there. Looks kind of cool doesn't sit flush. That could be the recoil's fault. I don't know why it doesn't sit flush on there. Well, that's really bizarre. That's kind of a bummer. I wanted to use that on there. Well, now I don't know what to use on there. How about the Alpine RDA? I've been using, or RDA, RTA. Been using this Alpine in the Tuesday Bro Tuesday videos. I have a feeling that's gonna look cool. Yeah, sits flush even. Looks cool. The bottom is flat. So it stands up, which is rad. I don't see any way to put batteries into this thing. Oh, look at that. It opens like this. It splits in half and then the bottom comes off and then that's where your batteries go in the bottom and there's a little door and your batteries go in. That's smart. So it's a plastic battery sled. It, it feels a little cheap. I mean, if I'm being honest, Feels a little bit chintzy. Let me get some batteries in here, and uh, I'm actually gonna pop these out of my out of my DNA 75 since I'm not gonna be using that anymore. So negative, positive. Close that. Turns on. It's got a very nice screen. Okay, it feels much more substantial now. Much more substantial. One, two, three, four, five. Icon 200 powered by VO chip. Looks cool. So it's set to five watts, in which we are gonna 
we're gonna turn it up. Unfortunately, this does adjust in 0.1 watt increments, which I am never a fan of. I, I'm just not a fan of that. I wanna go from 71 to 72 watts by pressing the button once. I don't wanna go from 71 to 71.1 to 71.2. I've never found the points useful. I always rock it. If 76 is not enough and 77 is too much, I mean, come on, I've never been in that situation. But we're gonna set this to 77 watts. I've got the Alpine RDA on top, filled it up with Grim Green Signature Vlog Day. This is a cool little, really comfortable mod to hold. Yeah, dude, just clouds, bro, clouds, and that looks cool. I like this. I need to take a picture of this for Instagram like right away it looks to be held on the bottom by magnets like if you let go it kind of snaps itself up there which is very cool it's like the perfect size for my hand i mean just the perfect size for my hand it's rounded it feels comfortable it feels nice it can't be that expensive it can't be that expensive i need to see how much this thing costs oh 99 bucks 100 bucks 99 bucks 200 watts dual 18650 heavily cloud kicker society branded this is one of those things where if you don't like the cks branding then you are not going to be into this mod thankfully i love the CKS branding. I love the Cloud Kicker Society branding. And this mod is just, I think it looks super cool. I'm not, I don't know how I feel about that raised platform for the 510. Do you see that? It's kind of raised, like a raised platform that your 510 sits on. It's 24 millimeters. So using 24 millimeter things on this is going to be great. But if I want to use this RDA from Coil Art, from Coil Tech, this is a 25 millimeter RDA, so it's gonna have a little bit of overhang on there. But yeah, it's got a very clicky button. It's got a very nice feel, very nice fit and finish. I'm gonna post a link down in the description where you can check it out if you're interested. And like I said, if you like the CKS branding, then you might really like the way this mod looks. I love the CKS branding, so I'm a big fan of the way this mod looks. I want the other one. I want two of these. I want that other one. This one is white with the white with the white Fujin guy and then black with the white Fujin guy. The other one has the gold Fujin guy like top to bottom like you can see the bottom part of this guy. I'm interested to see over time how this white holds up. How this paint holds up on here because I can that's printed on there. I'm just interested to see if it if it chips or like wears down because it's a it's a very nice bright soft white and I don't know if like in and out of pockets in and out of backpacks if that's gonna like chip or come off there's probably a pretty good chance but dude I'm kind of I'm kind of digging this guy right now all right so I'm gonna toss the rest of this away but I am gonna keep this user manual because I do plan on actually using this in temperature control mode I feel like I'm really late to the party but I've been interested in like testing things in temperature control mode just so I can talk about it. I don't want to be that guy that's like, I only like wattage mode, even though I really am that guy that says, I only like wattage mode. I'd like to try things, some things out in temperature control mode. You know what I mean? You never know. It's good to get to know a device inside and out. So let's go ahead and open this other package. And uh, I don't know. Let's see what's in here. I have no idea. It just says uh, Vapos. Uh, it's definitely from China. It's hizzy. What's hizzy? What's hizzy? Just please don't be something I have to build. I don't want to build right now. Oh, dang. Watofo. Watofo just sent the entire world to my house. What is this? The Lush Plus. All right, Watofo. Lush Plus RDA. That means I'm going to build an RDA, which is actually not awful. I don't hate building RDAs. I just, tanks, like RDTAs and RTAs, when I get those in the mail, I'm like, I don't really want to build that. RDAs don't generally bother me, and I'm really interested in this Lush Plus. One thing that one thing that Watofo does that I enjoy that they didn't do on this for some reason is on the back of all of their boxes, they always have like Oh, visit Kassab, visit Not Blowing Smoke. Here's how you do advocacy. Here's how you get involved in your vapor rights. Um, but for some reason, that's that's not on here. The Lush Plus. Oh, that's kind of an attractive little RDA. I like the way that looks quite a bit. It's nice and clean. It's a little bit 
contoured there at the top. Kind of see how it's really clean. There's not a lot of heavy branding on it. It does say lush on there, but overall it's very clean. I kind of even like this little contoury thing on there. Yeah, it's I think that's a I think that's a slick looking RDA, man. Drip tip on top. Oh, could this be could this be goon compatible? Is it goon compatible? Oh, please be goon compatible. That would just make me so happy. Oh, it's just a touch too narrow. Son of a bitch. It's just a touch too narrow. Bah, what are you gonna do? You can't can't win them all, right? All right, so let's go back to using this DNA 75 to get this top cap off. Whoa, look at that. That is a really kind of weird little deck there. It looks like a reverse recoil deck, kind of? What the hell's going on here? Okay, so one side is positive and the other, okay. Ready? Are you ready for the zoom in? You see this deck right here? It's kind of velocity-ish, I guess, a little bit in that two of the holes are higher than the other two holes. But if you look down, you can see a peak insulator in there. So that means this is the positive side and this is the negative side. So that means you could go from bottom to bottom, you could go from top to top, or you could go from top to bottom, or you could go from top to bottom that way as well. Phillips head screws on top, Kennedy style airflow in and up. I'm interested to see how that airflow feels. Interesting deck. So what I'm gonna do on, is uh, I'm just gonna throw a build on here real fast. Probably something simple and dirty um, just cause I wanna get it vaping. So let me just show you the build that I did. It is a uh, fused Clapton through the top two posts. I just disregarded the lower holes and I just built it like a two post RDA. I wicked it with that new CKS cotton and uh, yeah, that's that's how it turned out. Came out to around, what was the resistance on this? 0.3, about 0.28, which is great. I'm gonna run it on the uh, Segeli Fuchai Plus and uh, yeah, just wanted to show you the build. Boom, roasted. So yeah, that's the build I got on it. I'm gonna load it up with some of this here dainty juice that I've been wanting to vape again. It's that, uh, you know, funnel cake, apple anglaise sort of flavor. I don't know, it's just what I'm in the mood for. So, you know, that's what's going on my RDA. Because of the way that this deck is set up, even though it has Kennedy style airflow in and up through the bottom, I have a feeling I'm going to be able to bleh my juice on here and it's not going to, I don't have to worry about it leaking into those holes. Just because like that coil art RDA, it has screws, it has like a deck, like a row of material and screws that the juice can hit and kind of cascade onto your coils. Oh, it's producing the vapors. I haven't even given this airflow a try yet, so let's see how that feels. <laughs> eh, it's not my favorite airflow. It's a little bit sharp. If I had to describe it, I would say that this airflow is sharp. It's not very smooth and it is a little on the loud side. But 0 0.3, 73 watts, let's give it a shot. Very nice. This is a really nice vape. I'm not a huge fan of the way that airflow feels, but the flavor on it, quite nice. The deck was really easy to build on. Um, I do have to give a shout out real quick to a dude named Thomas. Is that your name? Thomas, yes, Ohm My Coils, Mr. Thomas. When I was moving, I was going through the process of like cleaning out some things in my desk and I found this baggie of coils. There's some fused Claptons in there. There's some frame staples in there. I don't know when I got this. I don't know if I got this at a meet or if I got this through the mail or anything like that, but I do want to give a shout out to Thomas and apologize because these have probably been sitting in my desk for like, I don't know, six months maybe at the most, maybe a little bit longer, but I threw his fused Claptons in here and they are super dope. And I was looking at how many wraps he did and it was like a six wrap or like a seven wrap. What was that sound? Did anybody else hear that sound? Anyway, it was like a six wrap or like a seven wrap. So I was trying to see like, maybe I could position it like this and utilize all the holes. And then I just lined them up. I slid them right into those top two center posts and they just zip went right in. And I was like, all right, boom, roasted. So I screwed them down. I cut the leads. They came out perfect. They glow really evenly and nice. And it's great and I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying this vape. I wish the airflow was just a touch smoother, but I think it looks cool. I think the deck is nice and unique. I like the down up airflow. It always gives me really good flavor and 
overall, I like the way this Watofo, what's it called? The Lush Plus. The Lush Plus. I like the way this Watofo Lush Plus looks. It does not have an adjustable airflow, but Eh, I like this airflow. I wouldn't adjust this airflow anyway. I might open it up just a hair, but as it stands, there's no adjustable airflow, but it seems to be working pretty well. I wanna go on the Watofo site and see how much these Lush Pluses cost. It does also come with some uh, wire in here, as well as a Phillips head screwdriver for all of your screwdriving screw driving needs, pardon me. And also, you know, you can't forget the Watofo t-shirt. It's just everything I've ever opened from Watofo has come with this tiny little like, hey, t-shirt giveaway. And I've never, I've never taken part in it, but thank you for offering it to me every time, Watofo. Oh wow, the Lush Plus isn't even on their website yet. Sapor, Sapor version two, the Cubed, the Troll, the Troll two, the Troll 24, 25 millimeter, Freak Show, Freak Show Mini, Sapor, Lush, and the Cubed Glass Chamber, which was, just a terrible RDA. So I don't know, the Lush Plus, Lush, Lush Plus, that's like kind of a tongue twister. Lush Plus, 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 Lush Plus. Tongue twister, Watofo. Thank you for the tongue, for the tongue twister, Watofo. Most of their atomizers are between like 25 and 30 bucks. So I can't imagine that this is gonna be any more than $30 and it'll be at least $24, which means it's gonna be a screaming deal. And dude, so far, I really like this. But yeah, as with all my first impressions, I'm gonna spend way more time with this before it gets a full review or enters the Tuesday Bro Tuesday queue. And that's, that's it. That's all I have for first impressions this week. I was moving. I could have packages at my old place. I'm waiting on some packages to arrive here. I don't know what's going on, but I kind of like doing less first impressions, like powering through like 12 first impressions in a vlog always just seems so daunting and so time consuming. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it in the future. First impressions to like two or three things because I'm really happy with the way this went. So yeah, that's gonna wrap up our first impressions. And here's where I'm gonna shoehorn in a new segment, exclusively just for this week's vlog video. And I don't know what to call it because it's not a retro vaping and it's kind of a review for a thing that never got a review. What we should call it is Grim Green Reviews a vape thing that he's never even tried before. How about that? So what I have this week uh, for this brand new segment of Grim Green Reviews a Vape Thing that he's never even tried before, this is called the Dual Way C. And I can't find any information on this thing. Dual Way C. I have two of these. I have one in black and one in white. And so I grabbed out the white one and never even opened it, never even looked at it or anything. And it appears to be a single 18650 box mod with a giant square tank on top. And I remember getting these in the mail and going, oh, okay, I'm just gonna file that there for right now. Like I have too much stuff going on. Oh, it's by EH Pro, EH Pro does it. I just was gonna set it aside and then it ended up in my closet and I never did a first impressions on it. I've never even opened it. It's still in the plastic. I've never tried it until today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this guy out and we're gonna look at it and we're gonna investigate it. Feels pretty nice. It's got like a shiny, hard, sort of very white shimmery coating on there. Back pops off for a single 18650, which I'm gonna grab right now. EH Pro, lot going on on this screen. Power normal, 15 watts. Power normal, 15 watts. What the heck? Oh no, I know what this is. I know what's happening right now. Let me take a look at this tank to, to verify my suspicions. There are two power settings on here. I can set one to 18 watts and one to 16 watts, or one to 12 watts and one to 24 watts, all running off of a single 18650 battery. So I'm gonna make sure these are even. I'm gonna set these both to 18 watts right now because this tank, this tank has two coil heads in it. Yep, this tank has two coil heads in it. This tank has two tanks in it, two separate coil heads in it. And this just slides off, so you have two tanks, and then you have this drip tip on top, and you can go like, just do one tank, just do the other tank, 
or do both tanks. So I think the idea behind this is they want you to do two different flavors or mix the flavors together, but still have it remain in two different tanks. That is a little bit ridiculous. Yep, there's a coil head. Okay, that whole base came out, but there's two separate coil heads here. All right, you know what? Let's do this, let's dig in. What two juices should I put in here? Let me look, let me consult the Han Solo cabinet. I'm gonna pick two juices to put in here. All right, so one of the coil heads is gonna get normal view from the Grim Green Signature line, uh, uh, cranberry orange sugar cookie, and then the other coil head is going to get milk plus, which is like a caramel milk flavor. I think that these two together might be really good. So what I'm gonna do real fast is I'm gonna prime these coil heads I'm gonna fill up the tanks separately, and then I'm gonna try, I'm not gonna be able to zoom in on this. I'm not gonna be able to zoom in on this at all. But on the bottom, there are two holes, and this goes to one tank, and this goes to the other tank. And then on the top, there's these two arrow marks, and there's hash marks. So if I have it set like this, that means it's gonna be drawing air from both tanks. If I have it set to just this, it closes off one side and then opens up the other side. So if I'm vaping on this and I'm like, that's too much normal view, I wanna switch it over to Milk Plus, I have to turn this and then I have to turn the power of one of them all the way down to zero, which you just press and hold, and then it turns it to zero, so it's only firing that one coil head. This is actually pretty interesting. I am fascinated, literally, right now. I am fascinated. All right, well, I got two tanks filled up, okay? I got a tank over here filled with Normal View from Grim Green Signature, and I got a tank over here filled with Milk Plus from Bonsai Vapors. <laughs> Really super gurgly. Uh, I think I overfilled them a little bit. I know that one of the coil heads is 0.8 and one of the coil heads is 0.7 because that's what it says. So this one's 0.7, that one's 0.75. So I'm gonna turn this up. Okay, it can only go to 35 watts. Okay. Okay, fuck it. I'm going to turn them both up to 35 watts, and I'm vaping out of both flavors. So this is Vlog Day mixed with Milk Plus. It's actually pretty fucking tasty. It's actually really super fucking tasty. It's supremely gurgly. I mean... A gurgly in a way that I haven't felt in a really long time. And I truly and honestly don't know where the airflow is coming in. I think the airflow is coming in this side window because it's not actually a window. It's just hollow in there. It's just a hole. So I think the air is going in the side into the tank and then up out. I have it still set to both. Let's give it a couple more toots here. Why not? Good. It's performing well. These two flavors mixed together, fuck, they taste pretty good. So I can tell from looking at the glass that this is Vlog Day and this is Milk Plus, but I don't know where that corresponds down here. The top one, that one, and then this one is that one, I guess. So let's turn this one off and see what I taste. I should just be tasting Milk Plus. In fact, I'm gonna adjust this so that I only get Milk Plus. Yes, that was only Milk Plus, and the other one is turned all the way down, and this one's still at 35 watts. Just getting Milk Plus now. All right, so if I did one, I have to do the other, so I'll turn that one to zero, I'll turn that one to 35, and then I'll adjust this so that I only get normal view. Yeah, and that's only normal view. There's like... They're not completely 100% separated. There's like a little bit of bleed over because there's juice that gets up in here. And so as I'm vaping normal view, I'll get like little specks of Milk Plus in there. And as I'm vaping Milk Plus, I'll get like little specks of normal view in there. The flavors aren't completely 100% separated. It's honestly a pretty cool idea. Uh, I wish it didn't run on a single 18650 and I wish the tanks weren't like 1.5 mils because that's, 
I mean, that's a huge honking thing to be one single 18650 with not a lot of juice capacity. It's just really large. Let's turn these back. I want them both. I want them both in my mouth. And it's just gurgly. Like, I can't get rid of the gurgle. It's really slurpy and gurgly. Really nice performance though from two, from a single 18650 cell running two running 35 watts on two separate coil heads. Pretty good performance. Is it time for some dubstep? Oh, I think it is. Well, that might not quite be dubstep worthy, but I don't know. It's fun. I wouldn't pay any money for this. I mean, if we're being honest, I wouldn't pay any money for this. The mod itself is kind of nice, but I don't know how it would register a single, you know, like a single atomizer on there. Let's try it. Why not? I'm gonna try this Watofo Troll on there, and it's got a maximum output of 35 watts, and I've been running this at about 66 watts, so I don't think it's gonna give me nearly as much power as I need. Nope, it just says check atomizer. Is it only compatible with its own atomizer? Yeah, it says check atomizer. That's weird. Let's try the Alpine on there, and it says... Check atomizer. <laughs> okay then. I think it is only compatible with its own atomizer because it has to have a way, the 510 pin in here is big on the outside and little in the middle with an insulator in between so that it can fire two separate chambers off of one 510 connection and it's just not making a connection with either of those 510s. But we're back to this guy, still working. Milk Plus mixed with Vlog Day. Interesting flavor combination that I literally never thought I would try. So ultimately, no, I wouldn't buy this. It's a nice idea. It's a really interesting idea. It's executed, eh. I think a single 18650 is really underpowered to run two separate coil heads, 2.7 ohm, 0.8 ohm coil heads. It does get a little bit gurgly, but it does what it says it'll do. It runs two separate coil heads and you can just do one flavor, just do the other flavor, or do both flavors mixed. Interesting, Dual Way C, interesting. I'll post the link down in the description if you wanna check it out. I can't really recommend it to most anybody because, I, I mean, I get it. It's, it's interesting, like it's a novelty, but I don't need, if I'm gonna mix juice, I'll just mix juice, like I'll just mix Vlog day and, and milk plus 50 50 and load it up in an RDA and then vape it. Like, I guess if you wanted to switch flavors throughout the day and you only wanted to carry one mod, this is like your only option to do that. <laughs> I feel like that's a very like small niche amount of people that want to switch flavors throughout the day and only carry one mod. And forget about switching flavors like throughout the day, these tanks are such low capacity that you might not even get through an entire day. I don't know, whatever, it's crazy. That's the Dual Way C, never tried it before, and, and there it is, and that was my new segment. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was really awkward. I'll try to avoid doing those in the future. Unless you guys like them, hey, you know what? I'm open to suggestions. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of Grim Green Reviews of Vape Thing that he's never tried before? I'm just so fascinated by it, I want to keep using it. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Let's wrap this vlog up. Let's get to some of my favorite comments of the week. Well, fuck everything. I'm going to have to apologize because I had like seven favorite comments of the week and when I was cleaning out one of my folders for all my vape stuff on my computer, I guess I deleted them and that sucks because they were pretty good. But I have three, I have three now, but I had like, I literally had like 12 saved and I was gonna like slowly dole them out. But here's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with this guy right here. This is a guy whose name is blocked out and he just says, I wish I could personally kill you cut your testicles off and mail them to a Japanese tuna processing company. Get the fuck out, out of my YouTube. Sure, you're so mad. Be angry. You're so angry, buddy guy. <laughs> then this guy here, sick as ticks, sick as tits, Trados. 
He says, hey, Nick, can you help me find a butthole flavored juice? Thank you in advance. <laughs> no, bro. No. And I, I was even going to make like a juice joke here. Like pick a juice that I really hate and be like, oh, here you go. <laughs> Here's a butthole flavored juice. But no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And the last favorite comment of the week is actually a nice guy, like a very nice helpful comment of the week. January 27th was my vape anniversary. Eight years tobacco free thanks to vaping, thanks to electronic cigarettes. And this guy had left a comment on my Instagram post. He goes by Hardcore Swim Bait Customs. And he says, studies suggest you may return to smoking any day now. Not congrats, fist bump. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I feel like if, uh, you know, vaping led to smoking, then really, he's right. I, I might be returning to smoking any day now after eight years of being off filthy, gross-tasting, disgusting, make your breath stink, make your life stink, make your clothes stink cigarettes. I want to go back to those instead of uh, vaping what the Royal College of Physicians says is 95% safer for me. Delicious caramel corpse in a troll RTA juice. Yeah, I want to go back to smoking. Anyway, that's going to wrap this up. Sun's going down. You know what? I got a lot more unpacking to do here at the house, but thank you. Thank you so much for joining me again, everybody. Let me know in the comments what you think of the new office. I like it. I think it's pretty dope. I'm gonna, I might get some sound dampening stuff up here just to dampen the echoey sound a little bit. I do have a, a, a huge area rug here from Ikea that has kind of really helped with the sound dampening, but let me know if the audio looks okay. Let me know if the video looks okay. Let me know if my face looks okay. But yeah, that's what I got. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to vape and I'm going to edit some video and I'm going to continue to unpack my house because it is just a disaster right now. So yeah, that's what I got everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me grab this guy right here. Foo Chai Lush Plus. Lush Plus. Lush Plus. Lush Plus. Lush Plus. Thanks so much for watching everybody and as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping.